coming up. The sights and sounds of AirVenture, day two of our coverage from the world's greatest aviation celebration. As one air show legend winds down his solo career, he's bringing up another. We meet the protege of Sean D. Tucker. Plus a bunch of brand new airplanes, including a personal jet. We show you the Stratus 714. All that and more as AOPA Live this week from AirVenture in Oshkosh begins in just a moment. Build and fly with the Sonics Aircraft B models. The B models offer more room and comfort, more fuel, more panel space, more engine choices, and the same great Sonics Aircraft flight characteristics. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. This is AOPA Live This Week with Tom Haynes and Melissa Redinger. Welcome to Oshkosh. We are back with day two of coverage from the show. And here we are at the AOPA campus, right along the flight line at the Brown Arch. And this spot has been great for us to visit with thousands of AOPA members. And it's even better to see all the action from the air shows. The world's greatest pilots are showing off their stuff in front of the crowds, from pits to extras to heavy bombers. The air show has been a blast to watch as always. The U.S. Navy Blue Angels are the headlining act this year. One of the air show greats, Sean D. Tucker, is all about helping to get youth into aviation. He's the chairman of EAA's Young Eagles program, and he has been instrumental in giving youth opportunities in aviation. As Sean wind winds down his solo career, he's bringing up the next generation of air show greats. AOPA associate editor Dave Tullis has the story of a young pilot who Sean is mentoring. 22-year-old Cameron Jacksheimer shows that dreams really can come true. His dream started with a young Eagles flight when he was 12 years old. My mom signed me up for it, and I think I'd enjoy it, which I did. I knew what I wanted to do for the rest of my life at that point. Cameron aspires to be a commercial airline pilot. Commercial aviation opens up the world. I can't think of any career I would prefer to have. And a competition aerobatic pilot. Aerobatics is my passion and my hobby. I don't want to make my passion and my hobby something that I'm working at. It took determination, hard work, and a dedicated mentor, but Cameron has met his goals and gone beyond. Cameron's mentor is aerobatic champion, Sean D. Tucker. I never thought Sean would end up being my mentor. When I was young, he was kind of an idol. I saw him at Oshkosh, so it's been a great honor to work with Sean and work under Sean. For Sean, mentoring Cameron gives him a chance to build the next generation of pilots. This kid didn't come from wealthy means. This kid was passionate about his conviction to follow his dream. And so me, as a, as a mentor, it's my job to open the door for him. It's my job to give him the opportunity and to give him all my knowledge, share all my skills, so he can be better than me. Cameron is now a career airline pilot for Endeavor Air. And when he's not flying passengers in a regional jet, he practices aerobatic skills. He ranked fifth in the world this year in the World Aerobatic Championships. Cameron's airplane is parked among airshow legends here in the hangar behind me. He first visited EAA's AirVenture when he was 15 years old and now hosts to perform in front of the public. People like Cameron Jacksheimer are certainly our future. Uh, for him to have the opportunity to fly at Oshkosh is making a statement from our community to him and to his community, that next generation, we believe in you. We're giving it a shot. Cameron's story illustrates that with determination and mentorship, anyone can accomplish their dreams. Your goals really aren't that far out of reach. It takes a lot of work to achieve those goals, but anybody can achieve anything they put their mind to. David Tulis, AOPA Live. Cameron hopes to perform here at AirVenture on Sunday. FAA Administrator Michael Huerta gave his last address at AirVenture this week. The administrator's term is up at the beginning of next year. He's accomplished a lot for GA, including the Part 23 rewrite and allowing non-TSO avionics in certified airplanes. Huerta also talked about basic med as one of the great accomplishments of his term. When I look at our record for the last few years, there's no question in my mind that we've improved the way we deal with pilots and with the planes that you fly. This starts with how we think about medical certification. As you know, we recently introduced a new approach we're calling basic med. Instead of requiring that you see an aviation medical examiner and obtain a third class medical certificate, most of you can now get an exam at your doctor 
and take an online medical course to get qualified. Huerta is one of the longest serving administrators in the FAA's history. He started his term in 2011. One can always find new and historic airplanes here at AirVenture, but this year there's also a rocket center stage. As Paul Moses tells us, Blue Origin has some people here doing a different kind of dreaming. Five, four, command start, two, one, zero. On November 23rd, 2015, Blue Origin's New Shepard rocket became the first to ascend above the Kármán line 62 miles up which is considered the boundary between Earth's atmosphere and space, and then successfully returned to Earth for a vertical landing. And this is that same ship at Oshkosh following four more suborbital flights. Gradatum ferociter, step by step ferociously in Latin, that's our motto. And so those tortoises really represent what we're about. So after every flight, we paint on another tortoise. You take off, you land, you fly again. That's exactly what we're doing with New Shepard. And that's the model that we're going for with all of our reusable rockets at Blue Origin. So this is the full scale mock-up of the crew cabin for the Blue Origin rockets. And you can see the window is of record size. I guess they want you to make sure you get your money's worth as they blast you into orbit before the parachutes come out and you begin your descent back to Earth. The entire flight from takeoff to touchdown will take just 11 minutes. You're gonna see the curvature of the Earth. You're gonna see the blackness of space. Juxtapose against the beautiful colors of Earth popping back at you. It's gonna be an incredible experience. Exactly how much is it worth? Well, that's yet to be determined. And it's interesting to hear how perspectives change with age. Space flight itself, I think it's um, probably something that I'd probably not want to go up in at the moment. <laughs> but I think in the future, then it is the way to go. I'd probably go as a space tourist and then, if I enjoy it, try and get into the career then, because it does seem very interesting. You think you'd ever want to be a space tourist? I don't think so. Do you want him to be a space tourist? No. <laughs> it's too far to visit. <laughs> I suppose checking it out here is a little more down to earth. Paul Moses, AOPA Live. Blue Origin is also working on a three-stage rocket dubbed New Glenn. For now, Blue Origin founder Amazon's Jeff Bezos and his team hope to fly customers next year, but Bezos says they won't do it until the new Shepard is ready. So Tom, I think you had a chance to get in the capsule. I did, and it was really, really fun to get in. It's a full-size mock-up of the capsule. You really feel like you're ready to launch, sending right here at AirVenture. And, and I, I learned something too, you, you know, the name of the current rocket, the, the one that's here has actually been up in space five times and landed back. Uh, and do you know why it's called New Shepard? No. Alan Shepard, first American to go suborbital. Their next rocket, which is gonna go into orbit, is called New Glenn after John Glenn, first American to go into orbit. So it's pretty neat the way they named their set. That's a nice nod to history. Yeah, right. And when we come back, a new app from your association. And a cool new personal jet. You're watching AOPA Live this week, AirVenture 2017. Instruments for professionals. Welcome back to our second of three broadcasts from AirVenture in Oshkosh. There's a brand new way to connect with your association. The brand new AOPA app is packed with features. AOPA social media manager John Munn says it's like having the whole association in the palm of your hand. It's got all your aviation content right on your phone, news, video, uh, content from Air Safety Institute, and all things AOPA and general aviation. You can find it right now on the App Store or in Google Play. Lance Air is going back to its roots with the new Mako, a roomy, powerful four-seat kit plane, and it will cruise at about 200 knots. One of the things that makes the Mako so fast is the unique auto-retracting front landing gear. The main gears don't retract. Mako kits have a retail price of $127,000. Finished airplanes will cost between two hundred and fifty and five hundred thousand, depending on options. There's a cool new hot rod making a splash in at Oshkosh. The Terrigan is a sporty two-seater. The airplane is targeted at young people. 
We want to make this aircraft attractable to the younger crowd. So the operating cost on this airplane is about $35 an hour. And we want to get it certified so that FBOs can use this as a training platform for their students. Who wouldn't want to get in this aircraft and go yank and bank and fly around? Now you've put the fun back into aviation. The Terrigan cruises at 167 knots. More information is available on their website. If you're looking for something even a bit more high performance, there is a new very light jet turning heads here at Boeing Plaza. AOPA technical editor Mike Collins has the story. A sleek new prototype jet made its debut at AirVenture, the Stratos 714. We tied various names, nothing really stuck. And then we say, well, you know, we are just at the border of the stratosphere, so why don't we call it Stratos? <laughs> Target cruise altitude for the jet is 41,000 feet with an airspeed of more than 400 knots. Uh, what we've tried to do with the, the Stratos is to, to bring true uh, business jet performance into the VLJ. The design was conceived 10 years ago. The prototype made its first flight in November of last year. And with only 70 hours on the airframe, the airplane is here at AirVenture. The single engine jet is configured to seat up to six and the company hopes to lead the very light jet class. We are a bigger airplane, we, we, we have a bigger engine, we carry more fuel, and we have a bigger cabin, you know, <laughs> so. The Stratus still faces a long journey to certification. Flight testing to date has been limited to 250 knots indicated airspeed and below 18,000 feet, but the company plans to expand the flight test envelope soon. Mike Collins, AOPA Live. So that looks like a lot of fun. Hope, you know, good luck, hope they can get that thing done. Yeah, you're gonna trade in the Bonanza? Uh, I'm not gonna trade in the Bonanza. <laughs> no. But it's been a great day. We had a really uh, wonderful weather today. I got to fly a B-17. I know. Uh, fly in a B-17, <laughs> let, let me be clear. I flew in a B-17. But anyhow, we'll hear more about that in an upcoming edition, but there's a really great backstory to the flight too. I can't wait for that. Right. And that's it for this edition. Join us again tomorrow for our third and final show from Oshkosh. If you missed anything, you can find it on our website or the new AOPA app. See you tomorrow. Meet the pilots who fly with AOPA Insurance. They love flying and saving money, just like you. At AOPA Insurance, we understand how you fly and provide the coverage you need to keep on flying. Call for a free quote and see which AOPA Insurance plan is right for you.